Hi everybody. I promised that I would make a video about the setup that Patty and I have here at the house, but I thought I needed to go a little bit beyond that and cover like possible setups. Patty and I have gone through a an evolution of how the thing here at the house has gone and up to where we're going full blue, uh, full green screen, two different cameras. We have quite the setup now, but it didn't get there instantly. We have a lot of trial and error in the process, uh, learning what works and what doesn't work. And hopefully this video can save you guys a bit of pain when it comes to live streaming shows, concerts. You know, then you can go as big, you know, as you want, or, you know, as clean and simple as you like as well. It's just whatever you want to do. There's, there's no wrong answer for live streaming. Just get the music out there. But if you want to, uh, incorporate a little more technology into your live streaming, then this is for you. The first thing a lot of people do, they're just they're playing their guitar in front of a phone using the internal microphone of the phone that can pick up the guitar and their voice. That's the simplest, easiest way to get your live streaming out there. It does it directly from Facebook. Uh, not a lot of bells and whistles that and things that can go wrong. When I talk about bells and whistles, I'm talking about Things that enhance, but that can also cause problems. So, and I'm the king of causing problems. And uh, this is taking us a while to get our setup done. So, if you want to do that, that's the easiest way to, to get your foot in the door and start doing your, your live streaming. Um, there are some things you can do, like if you want the sound from the guitar and from your voice to also have a little richer sound. Uh, I've seen people adding... PA systems. They're still using the internal mic of the phone or whatever they're using the stream from, but they are having their PA set up. That gives you the added uh, ability to mix the sound, as in have your guitar and voice balanced. It also, you can add effects in there if you're at running it through whatever you run, do your shows, then you can add reverb, delay, things like that. But for me, I kind of wanted to integrate the sound into the video itself so that it's not just using the camera's uh, microphone to do the, the streaming. So I was given a little insight into John Frenzy setup and that's kind of where things start. Now this is kind of the setup he has. You have a little, a little four channel mixer and you know you have your mic and your guitar you can have it input in here. There are a lot of things you can do. Of course you can adjust the levels so that everything comes out fairly even. If you want to integrate the audio from the mixer into the phone, say using a phone, an iPhone or, or a Galaxy, or in this case we're going to be talking iPhone. So, but you can use other cables and adapters in order to get the sound into a Samsung phone or whatever you have. So, in this case, I have a Focusrite 2i2, nice little one, is what I'm doing recording, and I'm taking my laptop out to do some audio recording some places. Love this thing. It's small. I have an 8i8 up in the in the, the the studio room, but in this case, I like it very portable, and it works well with this setup that we have going right here. So, a couple of things you're going to need in order to do that. And again, I've I've stolen this from someone else. I'm going to thank Eric Babin for uh, <laughs> giving me some uh, clues as to the setup uh, that I would need. So, I have this device. And the reason I need this is because I need to convert what's coming out of the mixer to USB in order to get it into the phone. So you would just take these quarter outs. In this case, this Focusrite is nice because it has XLRs and quarter inputs. And I only have quarter inch inputs coming out of there. So it's good to have choices with a device like the, the Scarlett. Now, another thing you're going to need is a little adapter like this. In this case, this is a camera. This is a lightning to camera adapter. Basically, it's just USB. Now, it also has, you have to get the one with the second slot because I need to have a charging cable going on. Now, you can buy just a cable that goes from lightning to USB, but that's not enough because this particular Focusrite doesn't plug into a wall, so you're gonna need the power coming from the adapter in order to make this work. So I would plug this into a normal charger outlet from a wall or whatever you're using a USB charger. So now I have power 
which is going to be going back to the focus right and I have USB from the focus right going into an iPhone. The iPhone is great for this because as soon as I plug this lightning cable in, it takes over the audio on the phone. So the only audio that this is going to be used and it's going to be coming from here, basically this disables the internal microphone. So when you're doing your streaming, you have your nice full mixed sound going through a nice I.O. device. Uh, a lot of things you can do to make your voice sound better. This thing, if I wanted reverb, I'd have to put a separate pedal on there. But there are ways to do that with this smaller mixer. So with a setup like this, you're good to go. You have nice integrated sound into your iPhone in this case. So you can have a, a good good sound quality and you know iPhones are good. It's great for streaming. For Patty and I, we wanted to go big. We want a green screen so this wasn't quite enough for us but uh, this works great and if you listen or go to John Frenzy, watch his live streams and you'll hear how great it sounds. Now I don't sound so great <laughs> as he does because well there's the uh, guitar playing and the whole singing thing that he does so much better than I do but it gives you a good rich sound going into your live stream and it's a fairly quick easy setup. Now let's look at a larger mixer. You can All right the next evolution in this uh, progression that we made was to move up you can use a bigger mixer in this case this is the old mixer I used to use for the full band it's got built-in effects and so it has a little more versatility so instead of having to add an extra pedal with the Behringer the small Behringer 4 channel it actually has built-in equalization reverb delay you have selections of things you can do it also has the added ability to be I have mains out that are quarter inch or on the back just your regular XLR outputs and the Focusrite works with both of those. So you can still have the same setup with the camera using the dongle and you just have a different mixer working into the Focusrite which makes it go USB into the camera. So the camera slash phone. So that's uh, another setup that you can do for a mixer. Now luckily for me with the band, I wanted to upgrade to a mixer that had a lot more versatility. Now this, with the effects you put on there, you have one choice. It's the effects for the whole board. So it's either on or off when you're dealing with the mixer itself, but there's not a lot of granularity you can get to that. So luckily for me, I purchased for the band, and this is the one, we, Patty and I started off with this one, and we decided to go ahead her comfort level with the more technical mixer is actually higher. So now we have this Mackie DL1608. I'm a big fan of this Mackie Pro FX12 that we have. It's kind of an analog type mixer, but this mixer is absolutely phenomenal. You can hook it up to a wireless setup and everybody can log into it, especially with the band. Everybody can log into it. You can control your own monitor out so I've got six different channels of monitors everybody gets to pick their own and adjust it themselves right from their mic stands now in this case different sounds and different effects for each channel can be accomplished you can do equalization on every channel not for the whole board so this was the next progression for us Patty's comfort level with this believe it or not is very high because this is what she does the sound with for our shows it still has XLR outs, so that works for work going into the focus right. So whatever mixer you choose, this setup for camera will work and it will integrate the sound with or audio with the video and you can stream right from your phone. Now the next setup I want to talk about where we're getting closer to what we're using here is I want green screen. There are different things I want to do with the production of the video as well as integrate the audio. So one of the, if you see Patty on camera when we do the shows, this is what we're using for her. We're using the wireless and a little app called NDI. It works good wirelessly into the laptop that I'm using that combine everything into what I call, I'm using vMix is the program I was using. A lot of people use OBS. It's free, it works good, 
But for me, the things that I wanted to do, a little, <laughs> everybody knows, I like to take things big. I don't do things just a little bit. Uh, even my ice bucket challenge I did a few years ago, I had to do a whole production for that. So it's just ingrained in my nature that I don't do things a little bit. So this is a nice, easy, quick setup. And now we're gonna start talking about the video and the software that Patty and I are using in our studio here, along with the green screen. All right, we've talked about the audio setup and integrating the audio into an iPhone. But in our case, you know, we have this, Patty has a, a 7D Mark II, shoots great video, looks great. You can put large aperture, aperture lenses on there. So you can use low light or lower light situations. It works really good. So we wanted to use that because it's kind of one of the reasons we got the camera. Or you can use a camcorder like the one that Patty's using to shoot this video right now. And in order for us to use green screen, we needed a bit of software. So there's two types of software you can get, or two that we have tried, and that is OBS, which is free, open source uh, video editing software. It works great, but in our case, we wanted just a few more bells and whistles in there, then this is a little uh, easier to operate. It's a software called vMix. So I recommend it. You can buy different tiers of packages in vMix, even though you buy it. So we decided to take this route. So we've talked about the two different software packages that, that we've tried, OBS, which like I said, works great. Both of them integrate well with Facebook Live, which is kind of what most of the people I know are using. So with Facebook Live, there's something called a stream key. If you want to use this software, especially with OBS, you have to start the live video, grab a stream key, go back to OBS, insert that value, and that helps you integrate with OBS. vMix, Everything can be done from right within the software itself. All we have to do is it even logs you into Facebook so that it, it binds itself to your Facebook once you log in and it sets up the stream. When you hit the stream button here, you don't have to do things in two different places. So that's one of the reasons that we really like vMix for doing our uh, live streaming with the video cameras that we're using. Now. I was talking about if you use a camcorder, you know, with, with that cable I had, and if you live stream directly from the phone, that's fine. But if you wanted to do something like we're doing with green screen, so we have different backgrounds, try to make it well, a little more of a production when we're doing our live streaming, you're gonna need something like this. So with this, you need to integrate the camera into the software. Now, NDI, I was talking about that before, is a way to do that. It's an app that you can put on your iPhone. I believe it works with Androids, but you, it definitely works with the iPhone, but it goes over wireless to get to the laptop. So there's a little bit, another link in the chain that could possibly go bad. And we thought that was our problem. I don't know if any of you guys saw our earlier test, like our first test, we had super jittery video, super bad audio, and that came down to the laptop that I was using it was kind of a low end laptop that I had bought just for traveling and uh, that I didn't mind if it was gonna get stolen. <laughs> so I bought a cheap one and it just didn't have enough horsepower for what we were doing. If you're doing it through a desktop, probably be a, a little easier. You have a little more horsepower there, but I, uh, that gave me a good excuse to go out and buy a gamer laptop. So this, thing is the it's not a mac but it's the mac daddy of uh of gaming laptops i like it so and it really helped uh, talking about the video even in our last uh, two tests ago we still had some jittery video but there is a setting in this laptop that says vmix use the the high horsepower video card so I had to make sure that vMix was using the, the high horsepower. It wasn't, it was trying to use the onboard one and it wasn't enough, didn't have enough horsepower. But we got that video problem sorted out by making sure that the NVIDIA card, GeForce card inside of this was actually supplying resources to the uh, MVIX software, vMix, sorry. Now, in order to integrate a camcorder or a DSLR into the laptop, you're gonna need something called a capture device. In this case, uh, we read good reviews about the Elgato HD60S Plus. So it, you know, it's, it's another expense that we had, but it integrates well with the camcorder, 
or with our digital SLR. And what it does is the HDMI out, we have the sound coming from our board going into the mic input of the camera and HDMI out to this capture device. And this capture device converts that to USB into the laptop. Now, this works great. The sound, however, when you're going from a mixer to a camcorder or uh, any kind of external camera, there is ground issues. If you guys heard, uh, everybody was talking about the buzz uh, two tests ago, and we did have a really, really nasty buzz. And we thought maybe it would be grounding among our equipment. Anybody that works with sound knows ground everything or make sure you power everything from a single circuit. That way you don't have ground loops that cause buzzing. In this case, we were, but it's a known problem between mixers and cameras that you're going to get a problem between balanced, unbalanced. There are grounding issues there. So what we did to cure that was we got this nice little, for $10, you can buy a ground loop isolator. I don't know if you can see this. This one was made by Impal. Turns out it works great. Uh, took the buzz right out of it, but we had a solution before I got this with a direct box. So uh, give me just a second here and we'll talk about the direct box. What did I do with it? Now, my initial solution for the grounding issue between the mixer and the camera, I just happen to have some direct boxes laying around. And I know a lot of us are gonna have these kind of hanging out around the house. So what I did was I came out of the mixer uh, with this adapter it's a female, a XLR female to quarter inch female adapter. Put that in the mixer, quarter inch to quarter inch input on the direct box. And coming out of it, I also have a XLR female to three and a half millimeter stereo cable. So this was the setup that I used to get the buzz out of there because this particular box has a ground lift switch on it. So this is with the buzz. As soon as I flip this little switch to lift the ground, buzz went away. So if you have a direct box laying around, you may have to buy a couple of cables. These are like, these adapters that I keep buying are like eight, between eight and 10 bucks for the most part. And I have lots of adapters. So I went to Micro Center. Thank goodness Micro Center has been open through the, through the crisis. And I've been able to go over there and I just went down the aisle and I bought a ton of adapters so that I could have multiple solutions for fixing any issues that I might have, I'm not having to make a trip back out, I'm trying to stay in the house as much as I can. So this was my first solution, worked great. The last test was running through this and we had no buzz. Now we just ran a test earlier today, not online, but the Impal uh, worked great. And this, if you look at it, it's just a little device with two, three and a half in, three and a half millimeter out. So we just plug that in and this is just an auxiliary cable going from there up to the camera. And we'll show you the camera that we're using here in just a second. Another thing we have is you can buy all kinds of isolators, ground loop isolators. In this case, this is RCA female on one side, RCA male on the other. You can always buy adapters for something like this and make it work for, for your application. But we just happen to have, or happen to find this little three and a half adapter, one eighth, and it worked great. But these things are like, what, 10 bucks a piece, Patty? I think they are. I think that was only $8. Yeah, so like anywhere from seven to $10 to get yourself a ground loop isolator if you're going from a mixer to a camcorder or a DSLR. Now, what I recommend if you're gonna buy or use an external camera like this is a microphone input and you're gonna need an HDMI output because that is going to go to your capture device, which converts it to USB, which of course works great with vMix, which we happen to look through the vMix compatible list. And that's how we decided on the Elgato HD60 S Plus. The S Plus integrates pretty seamlessly into the software. No other little settings you gotta go through and do. Settings inside, something you have to look for if you're using a software like this or OBS is the settings of the camera. In our case, we're 1920 by 1080. 
So all the settings inside have to match. We have, I had to go through all the settings for recording, for external, and set them all to 1920 by 1080. So that's something to think about if you're using software like this. So uh, we're gonna show you the camera, the nice 7D Mark II. We're gonna talk about that here in a second. Something else we're using for our camera setup is we're using an iPhone with the NDI software, which is wireless going into the laptop, connected to the laptop, feeding video. We're not taking any audio from this. So the NDI works great for this. And the reason we have a two camera setup is Patty's gonna have a camera on her and we're gonna have a camera. This is Patty's uh, Canon 7D Mark II. And this is the, the one that's the workhorse of our setup right now. And I'll show you what's going on with it. Okay, the workhorse of what we're doing with our video is this Canon 7D Mark II. Love this camera, all kinds of lenses. It gives us a lot of choices, low light situations, wide angle. We can do whatever we want with the video. In this case, it works really well with the green screen with the large aperture and when you're adjusting for, for the green screen to kind of get it out of the, the backdrop where it needs to be, the larger aperture helps. We tried using the camcorder, but the video isn't quite as good. It doesn't have a larger aperture, so the light is a little harder to work with when you're doing green screen with a smaller camcorder. It was okay, but this was just a better choice. And if you come in here, I'll show you what we have going on for our audio. We have the coming straight out of the mixer, we have the ground loop isolator, and that's running into an auxiliary cable. Going up to the mic input of the camera, if Patty can zoom in there, you can see there's all kinds of inputs on this camera. Any camera that has a mic input and an HDMI out will work with the type setup that Patty and I have. So, you see HDMI out here, microphone in, HDMI goes to the capture card, which goes into the laptop. Now, one more thing we wanted to integrate into ours is so that I could see what was going on with the Facebook Live video. So if Patty will show over here, we've actually taken the HDMI out of the laptop and fed it into a 20 inch television that we had going on or just kind of hanging out in the sunroom. And so that I can see if you'll go around to the front, you can see that I can see what's going on. Anything Patty is seeing on the, uh, you can see me here in the big camera. Mm -hmm. um, anything that Patty sees and the, the, the conversations, the, I can pretty much see what's going on. Although I do, because my eyes can't read and this, this television is not a high def one, it's an old one we had, that she, you know, she's there to help me uh, kind of keep track of conversations because I thrive on interaction. <laughs> just, just me doing something. Even when I'm doing live shows with the Tropical Attitudes Band, I love the interaction, thrive on it. So this isolated thing was a little weird at first, but starting to get used to it. And with Patty helping me out, we have a two microphone setup, two camera setup. The software does great picture in a picture. It does tickers across the bottom, um, titles. It does a lot. So we're very happy to have found the vMix software and then Patty is becoming a very good producer, as you can tell. She's doing all the video right now. And we, I really appreciate everything she's done. Now, if you have any questions about our setup, I think I covered it all. Now, there are other things that do to the show. You know, use the different backdrops. Margaritaville.com. I think it's just Margaritaville.com. They provided, and I provided a link for some backdrops. Lots of cool backdrops from Latitudes and with the Hemisphere Dancer. And Patty put together a stage for me, uh, stage backdrop, kind of like it's smoking tuna with the wooden signs in the back. She did that for me and all that is done on the green screen. I don't know if you can spin around and look at the green screen. And this is in our living room. So uh, I can make it look like I'm uh, here in uh, Margaritaville, or if I can be on the moon, I can be anywhere I want to be via the magic of green screen. Two other things I like to use, wireless for my guitar because I like to move around and it's, it's a whole lot easier. It keeps things a little cleaner here in the living room. I'm trying to keep all the wires and cables out of the way. And another thing I found is that I do enjoy a monitor. And I have the Audio-Technica wireless monitor that I use with a band. So I figured why not use it here so that it, uh, I can hear what's going on, what's coming through the board, what's going through the video. 
And if something needs adjusting, I can do that. Patty's real good. She's sitting there with the headphones on, making sure the sound is good. So having help from Patty has been a godsend because there's so much going on in our setup. But, you know, I like to go big, <laughs> like I said before, and do as much as I can to put on as good a show as I can. When the Tropical Attitudes Band plays, we have, we put up as many props on the stage. I've got some sails. Uh, we've got tiki torches, all kinds of things, because we want to put on a show, and I want to do that for you guys while we're doing this uh, isolation thing and quarantine, the Quarantim concerts. And, you know, I just want to do things nice for you. So you can do everything from the, the small setup like we were talking about, just a phone in front of you, Facebook Live, that's great, to the small mixer through the focus right, letting the phone do the streaming, and to what we have going on here, the laptop doing the streaming, we have a mixer going to the camera, camera feeding a capture device into the laptop. Sounds complicated, it's really not once you get into. Thank God for YouTube because that's how I learned a lot. I learned a lot through this process through mistakes. As you guys saw, the choppy video, I learned a lot about video in that, during that process. The, the grounding buzz, I know a lot of you guys out there with bands have had that problem with uh, the buzz chasing the buzz. In this case, there weren't many videos on that. We, uh, we happened to find one, Patty found one for me that kind of pointed us in the right direction and we figured out the problem. So the problem solving has actually been fun, but if you guys have any questions, just contact me uh, via Facebook or if you have my email, if you need my email, get just find me on Facebook and uh, then I will be happy to help you guys out. And because I know there are guys out there like Tim Sharon that are really big on helping other musicians. And this is kind of my way of giving it back. So many guys have helped me out along the way. Radio station owners, uh, other musicians have helped me out. So if I can help them out during this time where we have to do these quarantine concerts, then I am completely on board. So get a hold of me. I've probably seen the problem <laughs> so because we've seen them all and uh, so get a hold of me and I will help you guys out and I hope this video has been educational and helps you guys get get started and maybe bump bump up your game just a little bit on the showmanship so uh, hopefully I'll hear from you guys one more thing I want to talk about is lighting because whatever backdrop you're using on the green screen you don't want some weird unnatural lighting uh, in there. So with natural light coming in, when I'm using the Margaritaville backdrops that they provided, which they provided for free just for us, so make sure you check that out. But I can also use these studio lamps because Patty has tons of photography equipment around. So there's a lot of things we can do with lighting. And this, even after dark, makes it look like nice bright outside lighting inside when we're using the green screen and the backdrops. But when Patty made me the stage backdrop, it would look weird if I had this bright outdoor lighting on me and uh, like a dark kind of stage setup, like smoking tuna at night is kind of the look we were going for for the backdrop. Then you want to use something like uh, stage lighting, something that's going to have a lot of blues and reds and purples or whatever, not green. <laughs> if when the greens came on with this, when you're in front of a green screen. I completely disappeared, and when it switched to another color, boom, I was back again. It was all magic. So be aware of the lighting, especially like say when you're when you're doing a green screen. Don't wear a green shirt because it'll just disappear. But this kind of lighting, and it was a little bit of a trick to try and make it look like I was stage lit. We ended up, it was too bright being directly on me, even though these are just the, the mini four bars. I didn't have my, my big ones. Um, so this actually, so reflecting it off of the ceiling kind of gave a natural light. So be thinking about these things as you're doing the production in the videos is like, what's your backdrop and the lighting on me to kind of match the backdrop? Because I think we may have fooled a couple people in the first video uh, thinking I had maybe did something in my basement to build a little stage down there, but not, it was all green screen. So make sure your lighting and your distance from the camera kind of matches what you're doing in the backdrop. It's not gonna be perfect, but uh, just kind of think of those things as you're doing your production of your videos.